Hi, it's Gil McNeil with Berkland Gardens. So today we're just going to talk about a, a few conifers that are on this table behind me and um, through some of the other videos people are contacting me through um, our website they're finding my number and, and asking about different things. So I want to do some descriptions on things um, and what it, what it means to be a, a collector. Um, some of these people have been collecting for years and years or maybe you want to be a collector so um, there's trees here that you can start out with and, and uh, start collecting and there's just thousands and thousands of different unusual and uh, small, slow growing conifers that are uh, you can start building on and you don't have to get everything all at once just start building it little by little. I'll just pick this one up here it's a uh, Abies Procera which is a noble fir common name is noble fir it is a low growing flatter one um, that has a nice blue color um, uh, I think I said it was prostrata that's what it is and so there's a number of these that are like that. One of my favorites is Blau Hex, and we'll show that at another time. But there's some upright ones that have this powder blue color as well. So an excellent tree for, um, you know, people in, in, in the north part. It doesn't do well in the south unless it's grafted on particular types of understock, um, like Firma, which comes from Japan. It's a warm weather fir. So, um, so I'm not shipping any to the south at this time so this is um, a, a good really good fur and let's pick this, this is an all-time favorite of mine and it's another Abies Procera um, which again is the noble fur called Rick's Foxtail it has a nice dark green color um, small needle um, the the limbs or branches are are short as well and um, this this tree can be staked and be be very straight, but the, all the ones that I've had have a little bit of a windswept look to it, and I like that. And I just leave them unstaked and let them do what they want to do. Um, a great tree, and I have a few of these in stock that are that are available. So these are about four. They're in their fourth year, so a, a nice, nice starter plant. So let's see. Here's. Another fir, Abies lazio carpa. That's an alpine fir. Grows at a higher elevation. This is a weeping version called Blue Waterfall. So it just it would work well in a rock garden or in um, you know again a water feature area. So it, it's a really nice blue color as well. Um, lazio carpa is uh, you know native to up in the mountains in Washington State and then probably throughout the Rocky Mountains and those those areas so um, that's a, that's a great plant here's one that's native to Washington as well um, Abies amabilis it's a Pacific silver fir you can you can see underneath the needles are have that silvery color and um, so it's it grows flat and um, it will get fairly large. You can, it pr takes pruning easily. And another thing about this tree is that it will um, put out. A, very common for um, trees that, especially these these firs, that after a period of time they'll put out a leader, ten years, twelve years. And you can let that grow and let it mound up, or you can cut it out and keep it flat growing. One more fir that is one of my very favorites is a Nordman fir, Abies Nordmania. And this one is called Golden Spreader. It comes out as a chartreuse green in the, with a new foliage in um, late spring or summer. And then it starts turning gold, sometimes sooner than later, but by winter it gets a nice gold and keeps that right up until the time that it flushes out again with this new growth so that uh, again it's a flat grower um, it will eventually put out a leader which you can cut out it doesn't get a very tall I have 20 year old ones that that are only three or four or five feet tall and very broad at the bottom so I, that's an excellent tree we're going to talk about one more fir um, this one has a long name I'm going to read it off so I don't get it um, and it'll be on the screen too it's a uh, Abies Boris Regis 
JK Greece. So it's a, um, a Grecian um, Bulgarian fir, Bulgarian fir, fir um, a dwarf cultivar, nice dark green needles. Um, it'd be mounding, not, not put out a central leader, and um, just, you know, short branching. I'm going to say two to four inches a year is what it would be as so um, uh, an excellent fur for that small garden. Next we're going to talk about pines. So I have been interested in um, these slow growing dwarf and unusual conifers for about 20 years. The property we're on right now well, it used to be owned by um, Dave Helms and, and I met him uh, about 22, 23 years ago. Um, he had a little garden sale here. He was actually part of a garden tour and met him and then I started coming here and uh, getting interested in all these unusual conifers. I remember telling him one time that I really never cared for pines too much but was starting to get interested. They just seemed like not that cool of a tree to me but uh, since then over the over the years I've uh, gravitated to, towards pines a lot. And So the in interest in pines has been um, for the last 20 plus years they, they're interesting plants and in the slow growing unusual there's just so many nice ones available and we're going to talk about a few today if you're new to um, collecting conifers or just want something in your garden um, the mugos are, are great this is one of the most popular uh, called Sherwood compacta it grows slowly a um, couple inches two to three inches a year it's always very dense lots of buds just keep it cleaned out and sometimes I have one at home that's grafted on uh, what we call a standard up high and it's um, just beautiful and, and, and you know a, a great plant so Sherwood Compacta an excellent choice another one similar growth habit but with this really nice gold um, needle is um, Karsten's Winter Gold some of the cultivars this one has a nice uh, excellent gold tone as maybe as, as, as nice as Chief Joseph, which is considered the, the brightest gold out there. So, and again, it's, a, it's gonna be mounding and gold, golden or, and tight. So that, that's another really nice one. Uh, another interesting one is called Varilla, and it has uh, some of the, these mugos and, and um, uh, Pinus sylvestris, which are the Scots pines, have, um, they come out with a, a longer needle and then they come out with a short one and that's what Varela does. So that's very interesting. Again, slow growing, mounding, um, and uh, uh, nice dark green color. So you, you can see there's a contrast between all three of these with different colors. So that, that's very interesting in the landscape when you have all that contrast. The Karsten's winter gold, the new growth will be green. It doesn't turn gold until winter time. Obviously, the, the winter gold color. So another pine, Pinus strobus, these are the five needle pines. So pine, five needle pines are softer and, um, and this one is uh, Pinus strobus in eastern uh, part of the U.S., east, you know, the coast and up into um, the northern states. Uh, it's called mini twists and the needles are twisted. People really like this one and it's shrub-like. It, this particular, there's quite a few different ones, green twist and um, other ones too. This one stays smaller, more shrub shrub like, and some of them get a little bit taller, but they're easy to control by uh, pruning and keeping uh, either candling or just taking out some growth in the winter time and reducing the size of that, making it more dense. So excellent contrast. Then it, has, it shows that you, know, you can see why they call them white pines. They have the white underneath. And this one here is a black pine and Pinus thumbergii. There's, um, and it's from Japan, native to Japan. It's a cultivar called Ban Shosho. Very aggressive pines. You can see the 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 uh, white on the buds there, and those will be the the candles. We call them in a new growth. This one's more flat growing, um, so it'll be. Uh, not a huge, not a tree, upright tree, but a nice um, shrub-like, and it can get quite large. But you, again, you can control these by um, candling them or, or pruning them. We'll step into another eastern white pine. Uh, it has the name Louie, and it 
it's one of the nicest golds. It doesn't burn in the sun either, so that's another thing about your golds uh, to know whether they're going to be burning or um, if they'll hold their color even if they're in full sun. So some you have to give some, uh, particularly afternoon protection for from the from the hot afternoon sun. So um, really stands out in the landscape, a great plant. And that's going to be an upright plant, slow growing, but upright and conical and uh, and pruning is, is easy on that one. So another pine, Pinus sylvestris, the Scots pine or Scotch or Scots pine, depending on uh, where you're from and how you pronounce that, is uh, very slow growing, fairly narrow. Um, again, it has two sets of needles. It comes out with a longer needle and then then, then after that, it comes out with a second flush of the, the smaller needle, a nice contrast in it. As it gets to, develops into a larger plant, it never gets really huge, but it gets uh, uh, slow-growing, columnar, conical-like. Um, it looks like a penguin, a little bulging down at the bottom, and it's one of my favorite all-time plants. So I have lots of favorite plants. So a couple more couple more pines we're going to talk about. This one's a very favored, again, a white pine. It's a Japanese white pine. And uh, one of the real miniature, small dwarf ones called Regenhold. And I only have a few of these. I think one of these is going out uh, pretty soon. I have a request for it. But um, if you ever have a chance to put this in your garden, it's an excellent tree. Again, it won't, won't put out a leader. It'll be more of a globe. Um, and uh, and the color is just excellent on this one. Give an estimated age of between eight and ten years on this one, and this one here um, probably four to five years on this one. Lots of buds, so they they're nice and full, full full plant. Uh, I I don't have the name on this one right in front of me. We'll put it up on the screen. It's a variegated Japanese white pine again with. Um, it's gold, almost w white, and in, in you know it'll be almost white when it comes out. So they're yeah, very interesting again, kind of, kind of uh, globose, like a, not like a shrub. So next we're going to talk about some spruce. So we're going to wind up talking about some spruces, and there's so many. There's other conifers to talk about, and we'll talk about those in another video. But let's let's uh, pick up a couple of spruces and talk about them. Here's a little. Um, almost miniature, small dwarf, um, oriental spruce called Tom Thumb. And there's another spruce called Skylands that gets bigger, and this was a, they call it a sport. It was growing on it, and then it was propagated and brought along. Um, this one needs a little bit of afternoon um, shade. Uh, should have some afternoon shade that um, to keep it from burning. And it's small, I see lots of nice buds. It'll flush out nicely, but some of the needles last year got burned a little bit, but excellent little tree um, to put that gold in your yard. And then on the, these two here, they're both the same. They're uh, Colorado blue spruces, Picea pungens. And it's called blue pearl, the cultivar name. And they'll just grow into this shape here as they get bigger and bigger. They're just gonna be mounding, lots of buds, lots of growth. A little bit pokey, but not too bad. Um, excellent blue color in the landscape, so really good, good choice for that conifer gardener just to put in with your other plants. And I'll just mention quickly about this. I just picked this up from a friend of mine, and we're going to be doing some videos on at least one, hopefully up at his place. But I bring plants down. He's uh, not open for, for sales, but I can um, bring his stuff to our nursery and we can sell it here. It's a Picea abies, which is a Norway spruce, called Ven, Ven Benel's Dwarf. And this one is just grows so slowly. It's just tiniest little needle, needles and buds on it. And it's just a little ball. I, I would be guessing to see how old it is, but I, I would think at least, you know, in that 15 to 20 year old range, this size. It's grafted on a standard, and it's a nice stout standard that's holding it up good. Uh, and um, but really really a nice plant. I want to mention a couple of other firs and then um, we'll conclude the video. So this is a Abies laziocarpa, an alpine fir. It has a special name that I can't even pronounce but 
we'll put it up in a, in a, in a text in the video on front there. So um, it has a, like a check, check name and uh, discovered somewhere in, in, in the Czech Republic. So just tiny little needles, great color, and a con color for which they're native to um, Southern California, the Rocky Mountains and in that area. Uh, don't have the name on this one. We're, we're looking it up to see what it does, but really a tight little um, congested ball. So nice tree, but I appreciate everybody joining us on this video. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't. We'll try to get more videos out to you. We're just doing, I'm doing this in my retirement years and Max is helping me out. We're doing videos on dwarf and unusual conifers, other plants, and also on bonsais. So until next time, See you, see you soon. Bye.